We know that definite integrals are, are really good at helping us find the area under a curve on a, a given interval here, but they're actually helpful for something else as well. Um, they're helpful for finding the average value of a function over a, a given interval. So for instance, if your function, you know, let's say starts here and then it, you know, goes up and then down and then up and then down, you want to know what the average value is that it attains. Uh, actually, our, our eyes are pretty good at, at seeing this. I mean, normally um, we can just kind of, you know, ballpark it. Um, the average value looks like it's maybe somewhere, you know, maybe somewhere right about here or so. But um, how do we actually find that value? Well, that, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. How do we find <clears throat> where on the y-axis the average um, of the function is? Okay, um, before we get into that, let's just re just recall some basics about averages and whatnot. Normally, when we think of average, we normally think of it in terms of a discrete set of points, which is like a uh, just a, a you know some countable amount, like test grades or you know something that that you can actually add up and divide by how many that you have. Normally, that's when we think of average, that's that's what we think of. So um, here just as a simple example, you know, let's say, you know, Johnny gets test grades of a 94, an 86, and a 92, and he wants to know his test average. Well, as we remember, probably from high school or even middle school, um, all we would have to do here is uh, simply add these up. We say take 94 and 86 and 92. And then we total them, right? We total them, we get a, a total of 272. And then we would divide it by how many test grades Johnny had, in this case, three. And so when I push enter, it'll probably be somewhere between 86, his lowest grade, and 94, his highest grade. And, uh, and sure enough, it turns out to be <clears throat> around a, a 91, 90.67 whereabouts. So, um, around a 97 or, or so rounded obviously All right no that's with the discrete set and that's what we're very comfortable with but it gets a little trickier if our functions continuous right so let's let's think of an example here let's say we had a, a temperature gauge outside and then we measured the temperature from midnight through noon of the next day and through until midnight the following night um, and we wanted the average temperature for that day, the average temperature. So uh, here we have a continuous function because from one second to the next, there's all the, the uh, temperature is fluid. You can't get from, you know, 71 degrees to 72 degrees without going through every temperature between 71 and 72 if you include like the decimals and whatnot, it's fluid. It's, there's never any choppy break between, oh, well, now it's 65 degrees, now it's 70 degrees, now it's 75. It's more, it's more fluid than that. Now, uh, what you could do, and this is not the best idea, and this is not what we're going to do, is you could just, you know, go outside and measure the temperature at each hour. I mean, I suppose you could do that and then uh, go with the approach that we had previously. So it, this would, in effect, create a discrete set of points that you could add up all these temperatures and divide it by how many samples you have, and then that would get you very close to the average temperature. But if you did not take enough samples, your approximation may not be very accurate. We're looking for something that's perfect, not just a, a rough approximation. Not to mention that would be a lot of work. So instead, here's what we're going to do. There's actually a, a formula that uses calculus that can give us the average value of a continuous function, whereas it's, it's not a discrete set of points. So here we go, the average value of a continuous function. All right, so um, it does have an integral, and we're going to go from A to B. So we're going to integrate along that interval of whatever your function is. Now, if I stopped right there and that's all I did, you'd say, whoa, whoa, Devin, that's not it. That's not even close to it. This just finds the total area under the curve. That doesn't give you like an average value or something like that. And you would be right that this alone does not. But out front here, we're going to add one extra term. This is the new guy you have to remember. One over B minus A. One over B minus A. This is your formula. This is your formula for the average value of a function over a given interval. But I can do you one better than that. I can even kind of give you an analogy of where these things are coming from. Uh, this part here that I underlined in blue, this is like the totaling 
of let's say like Johnny's test grades. So in, in that process on the calculator where we added all his test grades and we got the total score, well that's kind of like this. So like in, in this example here, if you um, took the integral from A to B, um, that this would give you the total area under the curve, right? Now, what we're going to do beyond that, though, is, well, what do we do with Johnny's test grades? Once we get that total amount, we divided it by how many tests he took. He took three tests, so we divided that quantity by three. Well, if you look here in yellow, that's what this is doing. Notice we're dividing by B minus A. But what is B minus A? Well, that's the length. That's the length of the interval. I mean, just think about it for a second. If your interval was from 2 to 7, well, wouldn't that have a length of 5, right, from 2 to 7? And the way that you get that is you take 7 minus 2. So this is like your totaling, and this is like dividing by the length of the interval. And so what comes of all this is this average quantity that, that we were talking about earlier. Uh, it'll give you this exact numerical value. That's a, that's a y value. And it's the average value that the function attains on the interval that we're looking at. All right. So now we are going to do uh, a couple examples, but I'm going to try to keep this video from getting too long. We'll, we'll do a full example uh, in the upcoming video. So if you just go ahead and fast forward to that one, then uh, we'll actually work one of these out.